evening, and National Security Advisor Eduardo Año says the government will take all appropriate actions to get rid of the floating barrier that China installed near Bajo de Masinloc in the West Philippine Sea. According to Año, President Bongbong Marcos is always informed on all developments in the West Philippine Sea, particularly in the areas surrounding Bajo de Masinloc and Ayungin Shoal. Año condemns China's latest action in the West Philippine Sea, asserting it violates the 2016 ruling of the Permanent Court of Arbitration, which invalidated Beijing's claim over almost the entire South China Sea, overlapping areas within the Philippines' exclusive economic zone. Año says any state that prevents Filipino fishermen from doing artisanal fishing there violates the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea and International Law. Meanwhile, the Department of Foreign Affairs echoes Año, saying they will take all appropriate measures to protect the Philippine sovereignty and the livelihood of Filipino fisherfolk. On Sunday, the Philippine Coast Guard revealed that the Chinese Coast Guard installed on September 22 an approximately 300-meter-long floating barrier near Bajo de Masinloc, which is also known as Carborough Shoal. Justice Secretary Jesus Crispin Remulla says the Philippine government may remove the floating barrier installed by the Chinese Coast Guard in Bajo de Masinloc if it is within the country's exclusive economic zone. According to Remulla, the barrier is interfering with the country's activities in the area. Well, if it's within our economic zone, exclusive economic zone, then we will just declare it to be such and that uh, it's a violation of our, our right to exclusive economic zone and we can remove the city. Interfering with uh, uh, something that has been granted to us in accordance with the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. If it's an exclusive economic zone, then that is an interference in our activities. Remulia says he is set to meet with the Department of Foreign Affairs and the Office of the Solicitor General to discuss issues in the West Philippine Sea. On Sunday, the Philippine Coast Guard revealed that the Chinese Coast Guard installed on September 22 an approximately 300-meter-long floating barrier near Bajo de Masinloc, which is also known as the Scarborough Shoal. Remulia has earlier said that the Department of Justice had recommended filing cases against China over the issue of coral harvesting in the West Philippine Sea. The 125 million peso confidential fund lodged with the office of the vice president in 2022 was spent in just 11 days, quicker than the initial reports of 19 days, according to Marikina 2nd District Representative Stella Kimbo. At the plenary debates on the Commission on Audit Proposed Budget for 2024, Gabriela Partlist Representative Arlene Brosas asked Kimbo if the Commission on Audit can confirm that OVP spent the confidential funds from December 13 to 31, 2022, as what was stated in a statement of appropriations, obligations, and balances. Kimbo was speaking on behalf of COA during the plenary deliberation on the proposed 2024 budget. Madam Speaker, Ayon din sa mga nakaraang usapin, lumalabas na ginastos ng OVP ang halagang 125 million sa labing-labing siyam na araw, 19 days lamang, na mukhang napakaiksing panahon, Madam Speaker. Maari bang ikumpirma ng COA ang nangyaring ito? Madam Speaker, mula po sa Saob, December 13 to December 31 ang nakalagay. So, 19 days po yan. Madam Speaker, Ang totoo po ay nagulat din po ako nung mabasa ko ang mga balita na tila nagastos po sa loob ng 19 days at tinanong ko po ang uh, COA at tinignan ko po ang mga Iba't ibang mga reports. Pero hindi po ito nagastos sa loob ng 19 days kung hindi 11 days po. Madam Speaker, ah, 11 days. Ang hirap no, isipin kasi parang kung surveillance yan, ilang reward payment po yan na aabot ng... 11 million per day. So, Madam Speaker, medyo 
11 days. Confirm ko lang, Madam Speaker, 11 days. After this, Brosses asked if the confidential fund utilization has been audited already by COA, to which Kimbo answered by saying that the audit is ongoing. Kimbo said COA will submit the audit report by November 15, 2023. According to Kimbo, the COA has asked the OVP to provide more documents to support its use of the 125 million peso confidential funds in 2022. The audit is ongoing. And ngayong umaga po ay uh, nalaman ko po this morning na ang uh, COA po ay nakapagbigay na po ng kanilang preliminary observations sa Office of the Vice President. Sa makatawid po ay uh, sila po ay nakapag-issue ng kanilang audit observation memorandum na po, Madam Speaker. Ongoing pa rin ang audit. At uh, ang AOM ay preliminary findings um, and again, may confidential nature po ang AOM bagamat uh, ang masasabi po natin ay ang AOM na yan ay nagko-convey po ng um, request for additional documents mula sa Office of the Vice President para po... Um, para makapagpaliwanag sila ng um, ilan sa mga expenses po, Madam Speaker. Discussions at the House have been heated as Brosas and the Makabayan Bloc question the presence of confidential funds in OVP's 2022 budget. At one point, Makabayan lawmakers dangled the possibility of filing impeachment traps against Vice President Sara Duterte as they claimed that the CFs were obtained even as the original budget crafted under former Vice President Lenny Robredo, had no existing line item for such funds. But Kimbo and the Department of Budget and Management countered these claims, saying that the fund transfer was legal because the confidential fund was placed on an existing OVP project under the Good Governance Engagements and Social Services Project. LV Vergara's colleagues are also accusing their former employers of exploitation as they were likewise allegedly unpaid and deprived of health benefits. They stated their grievances against Pablo and Franz Ruiz during the resumption of the public inquiry being conducted by the Senate Committee on Justice and Human Rights on the alleged maltreatment of Vergara by the couple in Occidental Mindoro. During Monday's hearing, Senator Jingo Estrada asked an alleged former shop assistant of the Ruiz couple whether he received benefits from them. Paulo Toling, alias Pau Pau, answered no. Toling also told the senator that France cursed him whenever he committed mistakes. May, bene may benefits? Wala. Wala po. Walang pill health SSS pag Wala po. Biodata lang po. Ano no? Biodata lang po yung hiningi. So yung... Yung 4,000, magkano? 4,500, nakukuha mo ng buo yun? Hindi po ako sumahod sa kanya eh. Hindi ka sumahod? Apo. Ilang buwan ka nag-work doon? Wala po akong buwan nag-work doon. Two weeks lang po ako, Your Honor. Bakit ka, hindi, ba't ka napaalis? Hindi ka tumagal? Hindi. Baka po, natakot po ako agad, Your Honor. Baka a, ako po yung saktan din. Matulad po kay Ate LG. Baka ikaw susunod? Opo, ganun po. Kaya po umalis ako. Ang sama din po kasi ng ugali, palagi po nagmumura. Kahit po ipapahiya ka po niya sa mga customer po. But France denied ever employing Toling, saying she never saw him. Toling said he was a member of the couple staff for about...
The movie and television review and classification board will review the complaints against full-time show EAT after mainstay host Joey De Leon was criticized for his remarks about the issue of lubid or rope. During the Gimme 5 segment of noontime show EAT last September 23, De Leon was interacting with a contestant who was thinking of answers for things that can be put around a person's neck. De Leon mentioned lubid or rope, apparently in reference to the use of the twisted yarn in some suicide cases. The host comedian's remarks drew the ire of netizens and mental health advocates, with many calling him out for being insensitive to the topic of suicide and to the plight of those with mental health struggles. In a statement, the MTRCB says it will review the complaints in order to determine if his remarks would be deemed, deemed as valid issue. Incidentally, the MTRCB spokesperson is Jorella Lala Soto Antonio, daughter of the De Leon's co-host, former Senator Tito Soto. Neither the comedian host nor the camp of EAT have commented on the matter as of writing. Alamin naman natin ang mainit na balita sa mundo ng showbiz kasama si Bandera Editor, Irvin Santiago. Irvin? Hi Neil at sa lahat ng mga kabandera natin all over the universe, ito na nga ang latest Bandera Chica. Hindi man derecha ang inamin ng kapamilya actor na si Joshua Garcia, mukhang super happy naman talaga ang kanyang love life ngayon. Sa wakas, nagsalita na ang binata tungkol sa relasyon nila ng nababalitang bago niyang girlfriend, ang French-Filipino athlete na si Emilien Vigier. Sa press ko ng bago niyang movie, ang Fruitcake, natanong ang aktor kung ano ba talaga ang estado ng relasyon nila ni Emilien. Matapos pagpiestahan ang kanilang mga social media post na nagpapahiwatig sa kanilang matamis na pagtitinginan. Ayaw kumpirmahin at ayaw ding i ni Joshua ang balitang nagkakamabutihan na sila ng atleta base na rin sa mga ipinopost nilang mga litrato at video sa Instagram. Sa inang binata, wala siyang itinatanggi at pareho nilang desisyon ni Emilien na gawing pribado kung anuman ang totoong namamagitan sa kanila. Anya pa, mas pahalagan niya muna ang kanyang privacy at ng taong pinakamamahal niya ngayon. Less talk nga naman ay less mistake at less intriga at chismis na rin. Just that ako and her decided not to share with everyone kasi yung relationship na yan, kami lang naman yung part of it. Galing na kasi ako sa iba't ibang klase ng relationship. Every time na sinishare ko sa lahat. Parang nagkakagulo, alam mo yan, nagiging shady relationship. So parang this time, mas, mas pinapahalagang ko yun yung privacy ko para sa ganong aspect ng mga Samantala, ipinagdiinan din ni Joshua na walang balak mag-showbiz ang kanyang karelasyon dahil magulo at maintriga raw ang entertainment industry. Ayaw niya. Masyado magulo yung industry. Ayaw mo rin. Ayaw mo rin. Oo. Alam mo ako, hindi, ako, hindi ko kinukontrol yung taong karelasyon. Ako yung tipong susuportahan ka hanggang dulo. Kaman yung gusto mo malaki sa buhay. At yan ang bandera chika natin today. Thanks, Neil. Maraming salamat sa Irvin. Here's the latest roundup of today's top stories. National Security Advisor Eduardo Año says the government will take all appropriate actions to remove the floating barriers installed by China in Scarborough Shoal. Office of the Vice President's 125 million peso confidential fund in 2022 spent in just 11 days, quicker than the initial reports of 19 days, according to Marikina, Second District Representative Stella Kimbo. And fuel prices to roll back on Tuesday, September 26. And these are the stories you need to know today. I'm Neil Mercado. Follow Inquirer.net on Facebook, X, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Reddit. For more stories, visit Inquirer.net. Good evening.